afternoon, everyone. It's Robert from On My Turntable. Hope you're having a great day today. It's Wednesday afternoon. Still kind of a, a cloudy day out there today, but I don't think that's raining anymore. Still fairly pleasant. Uh, we are almost April, so um, it's uh, finally, spring's finally here. I <laughs> um, wanted to continue my VCLT review. Uh, I've received some awesome VCLT um, from uh, a fair amount of people, but mainly um, Aaron Mutha Alamar, one of the most giving guys in the vinyl community. He, he's just awesome. He uh, He's very conscious of what you are into, what you listen to, what band you like. He researches. He takes his time and researches and then sends you um, those albums either to start a discography completed discography, whatever uh, the case may be, but what a guy. And these, and what he sends you are, are usually mint. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Aaron with the Alamar for sending me this gem um, because it's one of my favorite bands. And unfortunately, a band that doesn't, that doesn't get talked about too much on the, on the vinyl community. And I don't know why, because these guys are amazing. Uh, this is Wishbone Ash's Live Dates. Um, a great double album of some of their um, biggest hits at the time, mostly from Argus, uh, one of their best albums, which I'll show you in, this, in just a bit. But yeah, uh, thank you, Aaron. <laughs> I love it. I really, really do love it. Um, these guys are great 70s rock. There's no doubt about it. Um, they are uh, right up there with um, the Deep Purples and Thin Lizzies and Black Sabbath uh, in their rockin' days. Um, you know, uh, Humble Pie, all those great 70s bands that just got have that <clears throat> bluesy rock groove. These guys are dual guitar kings. Um, amazing vocals, amazing harmonies. Um, they just rock. And it's right up my alley. I know in my previous video I talked about changes and, and getting into more music, which I love to do. But my main wheelhouse is classic rock. Um, and there's nothing nothing better. Um, they've got some fantastic albums out there, like uh, their uh, um, self-titled album, Wishbone Ash, Pilgrimage, uh, Wishbone 4, <laughs> fantastic stuff, Argus. There's a rub. Uh, now England, I mean, awesome, awesome stuff. And it goes on and on and on. Um, I guess I said earlier, no one talks about these guys. And I don't know why. Uh, or Andy Powell and uh, the original guitarist, Ted Turner. Two underrated guitarists that uh, just blaze through these powerful leads in harmony. And it's just awesome stuff. Uh, they've also gone through some lineup changes. Um, uh, Ted Turner left and was replaced with guitarist uh, Laurie uh, Wisefield, uh, which was a good match. Uh, John Wetton from King Crimson was with them for a time. Um, amazing uh, uh, John Wetton. Uh, Uriah Heap's Trevor Boulder uh, joined them for a bit. Um, bass player, both, pay, both John Wetton and... Uh, Trevor Boulder were bass players uh, with Wishbone Ash. Um, as it comes to find out, Andy Powell, um, one of the founding members, is still one of the remaining um, founding members of the band. He's about the only one left originally. Uh, if it wasn't for Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple, uh, Wishbone Ash might not be around. Um, they opened for Deep Purple on some dates, and Richie was so impressed with them that uh, he introduced them to producer uh, Derek Lawrence. And um, with his encouragement and Derek's help, um, they signed a deal with uh, Decca MCA Records. So thank you, Richie Blackmore, <laughs> uh, a fine guitarist in his own right. Even though you know he's um, he's a little out there sometimes. 
Um, but uh, I've got some great albums by these guys. And uh, um, this one in particular, I'm really, really loving. Um, of course, he sends in Mofi sleeves. This is on the uh, MCA Records label. It's a double album. Um, awesome photo there. There's the band there. But uh, again, most of this uh, is from their Argus album. Um, just extended and better live. These guys are a band that you have to listen to live um, to appreciate how good they are. Um, and uh, it's the first live album by them, released in 1973, uh, with the classic lineup of Andy Powell on guitar and vocals, Ted Turner on guitar and vocals, Martin Turner, no relationship to Ted on bass and vocals, and Steve Upton on drums. Um, some great tracks off of this one, like The King Will Come, Warrior, um, Throw Down the Sword, and The Pilgrim. Uh, all, all great stuff. Um, so some of the other albums that I have by these guys um, are uh, Wishbone Ash, Twin Barrels Burning. Uh, this is a different cover than the original. Uh, the original still showed a, a, a car on here, but it was more of a cartoonish type of um, car. Uh, but this is a cool cover. I used this in, in a contest. I can't remember what it was about, but uh, it's on the fancy label. Um, it's 1982 release, 12th studio album by the band, and uh, one of their highest charting studio albums. Um, reaching number 22 in the UK at the time. Um, and uh, it features uh, Trevor Boulder on, on bass, uh, one of the few albums that he was on. Um, just a great 80s rock. Uh, in, uh, I don't know how you, who you would compare this with. Um, maybe a harder version of Aerosmith, perhaps. Um, they changed a little bit in their style in this one, but still a, a great, great album. Um, also, Wishbone 4, obviously their fourth studio album, still on the MCA label. Uh, Wishbone 4, 1973 release, um, Ballad of the Beacon. Uh, no Easy Road, um, and The Progressive Sorrel. Yeah. <laughs> these guys, um, they they rock it out, and then they throw in these progressive uh, songs, and it just blows your mind. Um, maybe one of their weakest albums, and no fault of them, but uh, this is Locked In. This is on actually on the Atlantic label. So Locked In uh, is their um, sixth studio album in 1976. Uh, even the band considered it one of their weakest albums, uh, mainly because producer Tom Dowd uh, insisted they play quieter in the studio, which kind of ruined their uh, energy. Um, they're an energetic band for sure, and they need to rock it out. But uh, still some great gems on this one. Uh, no Water in the Well. Um, Moonshine, um, and then um, what was the other one that uh, I really enjoyed on this one? Um, uh, half past, uh, what's it called? Half past eleven, another great one. Um, yeah, half past eleven, the awesome song. So again, even though it's a weaker album, there's still some gems on this one. And when I say weak, it's not a bad album at all. It's just not as powerful as, as some of their other songs. Um, 
And then we have probably their most famous album, their best album in my opinion. We're gonna switch to CD here. This is Argus. Uh, this is a, uh, there's a great picture of the band there. So we have the deluxe edition um, with uh, some bonus tracks, um, some live tracks um, in concert, uh, BBC on disc two, um, and then the original album on uh, on side one with a couple of bonus tracks on it as well. So uh, I'm really, really happy to have this one. There's a line up there but uh, yeah one of their best third studio album by the band um, most commercially and critically successful albums peaked at number three in the UK uh, it's got a great medieval theme to it um, of course the harmonized uh, lead guitarists um, it's definitely the quintessential uh, wishbone album it really, really is so, so good. Argus. <clears throat> then I have their second studio album. This is Pilgrimage. And I've left the uh, hype stickers on this one. Um, it just explains what the CD looks like. And it actually looks like a little 45 which is cool. It sounds amazing. So, so good. Um, and uh, second album by the band released in 71. Um, it's more of a uh, more of acoustic folk rock style band and I don't mean folk rock in a, a typical folk rock sound it's 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 um, a more laid back sound but I think they were they were gearing up to the Argus album that I just showed you uh, again great great stuff but uh, amazing amazing pilgrimage and their debut album again with the hype sticker on it um, the same the same 45 looking CD and it even comes with a a little sleeve like you would get with a 45 <laughs> uh, but again great great debut album um, 1970 release and uh, this was the first album after being discovered by Richie Blackmore um, blues, progressive rock, lots of boogie blues rock as well on this one. So you go from this to Pilgrimage, which is a um, another game changer, and then you get into Argus. I mean, three amazing albums in a row, but completely different. And then every album they put out uh, was definitely different uh, in the end. And then finally, um, I've got a later box set of these guys. This is Roadworks. This is four live studio albums, uh, mainly from Germany. Um, at the Grand. Live at the Grand. And we have in Hamburg. Live in Germany. And at Ashcon. Uh, 74 ash or sorry ashcon 14 uh, ashcon was their kind of their venue um, where they held a lot of concerts but uh, what a what a fantastic album this is um, sounds really good these guys rock it out um, there's a later photo of Andy Powell Still a great guitarist. Sounds really good. So there you have it. There's some 
Wishbone Ash. You guys check Wishbone Ash out. They're a great, great band. Uh, highly underrated. Um, Andy Powell, Ted Turner, two underrated guitarists. Thank you, Aaron Mutha Alamar, again for some amazing BCLT. Uh, you're the best. Love you. Uh, love everyone in the beast in the bottom community. Uh, you guys are amazing. And uh, take care. Have yourself a wonderful day. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye now.